This is probably the most consistent I've ever been with like a series ever, but it is our September favorite houseplants video. It's honestly a bit crazy to me that we're already in September. I feel like we just started this year, so I don't know where the time's gone. And I'm starting to run out of like, I try not to duplicate these plants as much as possible, but like if it's a favorite, I'll include it anyways. Um, but I like to give you a bit of a different variety every time, so it's not just like the same house plants over and over again. Um, and then that hopefully gives you guys some ideas as well for like your next purchase or something like that. So we're probably going to start with like the most common house plant that I have that's like in this list and then work our way up to maybe the more uncommon ones. Um, just because, you know, just mix it up a bit instead of going completely random like I usually do. Um, you'll notice that this is a different setup completely. I'm actually in my new house and I'm wanting to redo this room completely to make it into like a little like plant type room. Um, and if you guys are interested in that sort of like process, journey, whatever type thing, let me know because I can film it and post it all. Um, it just kind of depends if you guys are interested because that's not the usual content that I do here. So I didn't want to post it if you guys um, are interested in seeing that. But anyways, the first plant on this list and the most common plant that I have in this list is my Neon Pothos. And if, um... If you've seen my three week, like leaving my plants, not watering them and stuff, this is one that like was very wilted and just not happy. And then in one of my more recent videos, I actually repotted him from a four inch into a six inch pot and he's he's doing so well. Um, this is probably, I don't know if I have a picture of him when I first got him. If I do, I'll put it up right now. But this is, um, it's really big for how long I've had it. I've only had it for like a couple of months maybe. I'm not positive how long it's been actually, but it hasn't really been all that long. So I'm just shocked to see this amount of growth on him and he's just still so healthy and he's lost quite a few leaves from like when I repotted him. Um, I recently moved with him and that took off a couple of leaves as well. And he's just, he is still putting out insane growth. So I'm super happy about that. I'm super excited to see him get fuller. I have several like hooks above my main entryway in the front part of my house that I'm trying to like grow him out to the point where I can hook him around there and like trail him over because I think that would look so pretty with him like trailing down from there. Um, he's a long ways away from that, but I'm hoping eventually to get him to that point. So yeah, if you want an easy, Kind of like, I think he does well in low light. I haven't had any issues no matter where I put him, but if you want an easy low light kind of type house plant, I know everybody says pothos, but if you want something that's a bit different than like the jade pothos or golden, neon is definitely the way to go. And then while we're on this whole pothos train, I'm sorry, I know some people just don't like pothos because it's such like an overhyped type, like low light or like low fuss plant. But honestly, I think they're great and like, you know, you don't have to really stray from the basics and they're cheap, you can find them anywhere. So it's just like, why not get them, you know? And there's so many different varieties. So it's just like, yeah, I don't know. I think they're fine. Um, but anyways, the next one is my Marble Queen Pothos. Let me just move this plant out of the way. But my Marble Queen, it hasn't grown a ton since I got it. Um, so like, that's a bit of a bummer because I really like fast growing house plants. But this one has just kind of grown on me quite a lot. It's got some leaves up here that are more like a Snow Queen variety. Um, but I think that's just because it was in a higher light area. So it like put out more variegation. Um, but I really like the look of these leaves. And I don't know if I can get this close enough. I apologize about those really bright spots of light just because it's beaming in through the window. I can't quite help it. But the leaves are, they're insane. I mean, truly Marble Queen is like a fitting name because it's completely like a marbled look on the leaves. But I just want him to start trailing and that's what I'm super excited for. So I hope I can get it to that point and keep it happy long enough to get to that point. Um, this one, as far as pothos goes, it's a bit uh, more inclined to show like little brown bits and spots and all that sort of stuff. So that is like also a bit of a bummer. Um, but I mean, it's still good nonetheless. And it is like growing, it's just not growing at a great uh, fast rate. I'm not sure why that is because it like, I'm watering it properly. It, I think it has enough space in there in the pot. I've like changed out its soil after I got it, but I don't know. I don't know what to do to make it grow faster or if it even can grow faster. And then another one that's similar to pothos, but it's not a pothos, it's philodendron is my my gins and I've traded this out. It used to be in like my little basketball hanger that everybody's confused about when they see it. 
but now I've just put it into a regular like, terracotta pot that I painted because it just, I liked it in the basketball hanger and I liked it hanging. It just didn't, um, I don't know, it wasn't the best match up there. And I like it much better in a regular pot just hanging off a shelf. Um, but this one has also grown quite crazy and it's uh, it's a bit leggier than I like my plants. I like my plants with a little less space in between the leaves, but honestly, like, it is what it is. You know, I can't really change it. Um, I will probably take more propagations and like cuttings of this because I just did that actually not too long ago. And that's how I filled out the top here because the top was not very full because it was only getting light on like the one side while it was in the basketball hanging like plant or whatever. So now I've put it in a brighter spot. It's in an east facing window now, um, like that gets full sun in the morning till like midday or so. Um, and it's doing really good. It's giving me like those really like dark colored leaves, like the reddish orange kind of tint, which I really love. I think that looks really pretty. Um, like I said, I definitely need to take more cuttings of it because I want a load of like tiny micans pots all around because this was when I first started collecting houseplants. My first wishlist plant was a string of hearts and that was kind of more of like the common plants that I just didn't see very often. So that was the one that I wanted and I got a string of hearts and I mean now I've got like five. And the other one that I wanted that I was not able to find for like a decent price as well. I didn't want to spend an arm and a leg just because I knew that they weren't, um, I'm going to say weren't worth that much. Uh, if we're going to talk like actual monetary value on these things. Um, I knew it wasn't worth the prices that people were charging in their purges and everything. Cause sometimes people can really price gouge in their purges. And I just don't feel right about buying them at absurd prices. So I was kind of just holding back on all the micans that I saw because I'm like, I'm not gonna pay $15 for one leaf um, because they're not that rare where, I'm, where I am. So I just, I held out for ages and then I finally found this one that, I mean, it was smaller obviously when I bought it, but it was still like a full four inch pot that was alive and rooted. Um, I got it for like $25, which is still uh, quite a lot for now, like the pots that I'm seeing show up. Um, but like at the time it was fine. So it was just one that I really held out for for a long time and was on my wish list for actual ages. So it's just so much more rewarding to see it actually really uh, thrive and look nice. Um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons it's all my favorites. And it usually is like pretty high up there, but I think just since it's been growing so well and stuff, uh, that's why it's on this list. And then we're getting towards the end of the list here. Um, the next one right behind me here is my Hoya ovovada, and this is probably one of the most expensive plants that I have bought before. Um, I mean, I say most expensive, but it still was not very expensive. Um, I realized I had like a little light on my chin, but um, this one was another one that was on my wish list for quite a long time, like recently, so it's not a super, um, like, you know, a year of looking for one or anything. But I wanted an ovovada that was like well-rooted and established just because I don't have a ton of experience with Hoyas. So I just wanted one that was like good, you know? So I found this one at Plants and Planters in Richardson in Texas. And it was like, I want to say like $40. Um, but I mean, this is a pretty big basket of it. So I was super happy about that. And it's super healthy. If you can see, it's like super green in here and everything. Um, I did go to check the soil today to see if it needed to be watered because I haven't watered it since I got it. And the soil is so compact. Like I can't even squeeze the size of the nursery pot to like loosen it up. It is so like packed in there and just not moving. So I need to definitely loosen up that soil and maybe even change out that soil to make sure that this plant stays happy because compact soil is not going to be good for your plant because the roots won't even be able to break through and something like it just messes with the watering and all that sort of stuff. So keep your eyes peeled for a video about that repotting and just how to take care of compact soil. But yes, the Obovada is just like, it's got the really big green brown leaves and that's just everything I love in a plant. Um, so yeah, and I really like how full it is and all that sort of stuff. And then last on this list is actually funnily enough, another Hoya because I used to say that I did not like Hoyas, but now I've got like five. So. This one is watering right now, so I can't really like show you properly, but it's a Hoya Carry. It's bottom watering it right now. Um, and it's variegated as you can see in this one. I see like a bunch of the um, like single hearted Hoya Carries selling around like Valentine's Day and all that, um, which they're so cute. They're great, but they don't grow really 
or if you do, you have to get really lucky and get one with like an actual node on it because usually it's just the leaf when you're buying those. So it just doesn't live for that long. It's not designed to live for that long. But I found this Hoya Carry at North Haven Gardens in, is that in Dallas? I think it's in Dallas. Um, but it's so cute. They had so many Hoya like a couple weeks back and it took everything in me not to buy every single one of them. So we found this one. Um, they had just regular green as well, but I thought the variegation looked kind of cute and it was different from the rest of my plants that I have. Like it's not just like the plain green. Um, it has a couple of new leaves growing, but they're super tiny and I don't think this is a super quick grower. So it's gonna be one that I have to be a bit more patient on. If you see in my channel, you know that I really like Hartley Philodendron and that's partially because I just like finding plants, but also because I like the heart shape. It's just like, it's cute. It's a little cutesy thing. And these have the heart shaped leaves as well. And so that's, I think part of the reason why I liked it so much was it was variegated and then also has the heart shaped leaves, which I just love. And then it's also, if you get it long enough, it'll vine as well. So it's, it's got everything I love in the plant. So I'm super excited to see if that one thrives. Um, this is my first time watering it. And in my experience, um, how to tell if a plant's gonna like thrive under your care is if you can keep it alive long enough to the first watering and then if it stays alive after the first watering like for the initial whatever so I always kind of track it that way like if I get past the first watering I'm usually in the clear and I can keep the plant relatively happy um, unless like circumstances change and like the weather changes that's another like milestone where it's like okay they're been alive all summer let's see if they can survive the winter um, but generally when I first get a house plant it's like okay can they survive the first watering and if they survive past that i'm usually good but those are all my favorite house plants for september and i hope you can go find these i hope you just put them on your wish list and then go hit them um i don't know how hard it is or easy it is to find a lot of these the hoya carry is one that i don't see a whole lot um sold in nurseries other than like the single heart versions same with Ovada, actually. I don't see that a whole lot, but the rest of them, I'm sure you can find somewhere. And I hope you can if you even like them, but I want to hear what your favorite recent houseplant purchases are. So if you have any of those, leave them down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.